I'm here with my friend Nohai. Noel, how are you doing, my friend? I'm okay, thank you. I gotta ask, tell me a little bit uh, about Red Cat Tales Publishing. Uh, a little bit about it. Okay, I'm the Red Cat, and uh, it started, uh, I officially started it about two years ago. What happened, I've been a novelist for 40 years, and uh, back around 10, 15 years ago, I got back most of the original rights for all of my early suspense thrillers and supernatural thrillers. And then I just held them for many years, didn't know what to do with them, but I knew having them was better than not having them. So then the electronic publishing started to become very uh, attractive and very accessible to a lot of people. So I started to publish myself electronically through Amazon in partnership with Amazon. And then it, that became so successful that I started my own small company about two years ago I basically publish myself, the backlist of my father, Alan Hind, who was a true crime writer, and um, a few people I know, and we're getting into comics and developing some comics, and I do some um, in translation from French publishers, which I obviously get the rights for. So you're on the whole shebang, basically, the whole enchilada? Um, pretty much, yes. Uh, my wife also. Technically, it's 50-50. Uh, but I'm more the point person because she has an honest job with one of the film studios <laughs> in, uh, in Los Angeles. All right. So as a writer, who do you consider as your inspirations? Um, I always liked, when I was growing up, I always liked Graham Greene. Uh, I read all of the Ian Fleming stories. Uh, as I got older, I read uh, John Le Carre a lot. And then I was very lucky when I was first getting published, um, I guess I was still growing up when I was in my 20s. So, uh, aren't we all? Aren't we all? I'm still growing up now, even though I'm no longer in my 20s. We, I had the same publisher, uh, sorry, same publisher and editor as Robert Ludlum. Uh, so I got to know him a little bit, and I learned a lot from him and from his editor. So uh, what other works have you written aside from True Crime and Ghost Stories? Uh, aside from True Crime and Ghost Stories, I've written a lot of uh, suspense thrillers. The best known ones are Flowers from Berlin and Truman Spy. I also uh, wrote some true crime, again, when I was uh, in my 20s, and um, also I worked for Sports Illustrated for about five years as a outside contributor. Nice. So what, what's a little bit about the publishing process like? What's it about? Like, how do you go about it? For me? For yeah. For the average person. For the average person. For both, actually. Uh, for the average person, uh, you do anything that would uh, make... You can either, there's two routes you can go. You can try to self-publish, or you can try to get published by a um, traditional New York or smaller publishing company. That is very difficult, and it takes a long time, because um, they are inundated with stuff, and frankly, they don't always understand what they're reading. They don't always make good decisions. They don't always make wise decisions. And increasingly, What's happening at the traditional New York publishing companies is that the marketing department is running the company, and the marketing department often defers to the big wholesalers or the big retailers. It, when I was first published, an editor would make a decision, and then he would tell his marketing people that he'd acquired a book, uh, and it was their job, which it was, to figure out how to sell it. The other route you can go is self-publishing, but basically, you're, by becoming your own publisher, you are also becoming a publisher, and you've got to make business decisions, you've got to make investments in advertising, uh, you've got to do your own promotion and publicity. It's extremely hard to do it successfully. Yeah. So what's the best route? Would you advise? <laughs> <laughs> Double-edged question right there. Um, knowing what I know about traditional publishers, I would advise people to give, get, develop your best manuscript and then try to hire some professional help, like an outside editor, to give you some insight on it. Um, and um, be persistent and listen. Don't get defensive about criticism. Um, be constructive about criticism. If you show your manuscript or 50 pages of it to five people and Two of them start saying the same thing. It's too long or it needs to be uh, more compelling. They're probably on to something. All right. Now, what's your best and favorite work that you've written? Probably either Ghosts, which is a supernatural uh, thriller, or Flowers in Berlin, maybe Truman's Spy. 
Speaking of which, Flower Summerlin Hawk book, I've been reading it. It's, 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 it's a page turner, uh, so I'm on the edge of my seat. Thank you. It's, uh, I've been, it's sold with a million copies of downloads. I wrote it in 1986. And then, again, thanks to you. Projects up that we should know about that you need to hint at? Um, I'm doing, I'm writing a sequel to Flowers in Berlin. It's called Return to Berlin. I'm writing a supernatural thriller um, based on the life and writings of Charles Baudelaire, the French poet. I have another uh, espionage flow that I'm writing. It's called Firebird. I hope it will be out by the end of 2016. Uh, and it revolves around the 2000, sorry, the 1968 election. And uh, I was uh, also completing a novelization in English of a French graphic novel series titled Jim, D-J-I-N-N, which was written by a wonderful Belgian writer named Jean Dufault and illustrated by a friend of mine. Jean is also a friend, but the illustrator is a woman named Anna Morales. Uh, you can Google both of them and see the project. Um, it's been out in Europe since uh, 2004, I think, and there has never been a uh, English language novelization or uh, translation. I look forward to it, my friend. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Take care. Too.